Amon Ross St. Brown. I feel like you can't talk enough about the guy. Mm. He's a stud. Uh, there's a video now on our social media as well as Detroit Lions social media, and that's Amon Ra doing the one-hand catches after practice. And now you see him running deep routes. And this is something that he's talked about implementing in his game as well. Guys, it's a scary season from Ross A. Brown. He's, he's one of the, the best up-and-coming wide receivers. The guy catches everything that's thrown his way, tied uh, for the NFL and NFL history for receiver through his first two seasons for the most receptions. Sam, when you see a clip like this, what do you think? Oh, man. I I see that the sky is the limit for Amon Ross St. Brown because when we talk about him potentially getting better, we first have to start out with how good he already is. Last season, Amon Ross St. Brown was one of eight players in the NFL to have over 100 receptions mm -hmm. and over 1,000 receiving yards, something that A.J. Brown, Jalen Waddle, Devontae Smith, Terry McLaurin, Amari Cooper, Mike Evans, Garrett Wilson, D.K. Metcalf, and Jamar Chase didn't do. Those are some big names, some names that a certain list had above Amon and Ross St. Brown. They're, they're wrong with all of them, ex for the exception of Jamar Chase and A.J. Brown, of course. But still, if Amon Ross St. Brown can add more of a deep threat element to his game, then the, then the ceiling for Amon Ross St. Brown is multiple time first team all, first team all pro. The ceiling for Amon Ross St. Brown is to become the single most productive wide receiver in Detroit Lions history. I know that that's, that that's a bit of a, of a stretch at this point. You think point. over Calvin? Okay. And so I'm asking, I'm not, I'm not like, Throwing shots at you, like no, I'm genuinely asking. I 100% get that, and I love Calvin Johnson. I respect the hell out of him. He is one of the greatest wide receivers to ever play NFL football. But I think that Amon Ross St. Brown will beat him in receptions at some point. Calvin Johnson has 731. Amon Ross St. Brown has 196 for, through his first two seasons. Jesus. And the one thing where Amon Ross St. Brown, I would say, is lacking in the stat department is yards per catch. His rookie year he had about 10. His second year he had 11. But if he can add that deep threat element, which if you saw if you saw PFF rankings, he was number one amongst all wide receivers in man coverage. You saw that route running ability. He obviously runs crisp, pristine routes. It, w I mean, at this point, it's just the natural progression into him being one of the best wide receivers in the NFL. And at that point, I think his receiving yards go up. Instead of having like 1,100, he could get to 13 or 1,400 on similar receptions. And we also have to remember last year that he only played in 16 games, and I believe he was very very limited in another one yeah the so, cowboys game yeah, he so, got hurt after his like a four yard catch he got a concussion absolutely that was you're you're, you're exactly right so if if amon ross st brown can add more of a deep threat let's just talk about next year it wouldn't shock me at all if he's second team all pro actually mm. if he can effectively run the, the 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 deep routes and get more targets especially in the first six weeks when jared goff isn't going to have jameson williams at his disposal i think that second team all pro is a very very realistic uh expectation for Amon Ross St. Brown next year and then in the years to come he could even make some first team all pros and eventually like I said I think he could, could have more receptions as a lion than Calvin Johnson and I think he could even challenge receiving yards which Calvin Johnson has 11,619 if Amon Ross St. Brown continues on this trajectory I don't think it I'm could crazy. be close it yeah. could be close I think yeah. the production could be very similar I just think obviously talent is it goes to Calvin but yes the, the common saying is I mean, it's not that Kelvin didn't work hard, but when talent doesn't use hard work, hard work beats talent. So, I mean, that's the classic yeah. saying with yeah. it. Yeah, hard work and beats it when talent doesn't work hard. Yeah, and yeah. I, I don't see – it's not a far far off comparison but, final. But here's the thing that's interesting about Amon Ra, and I, I say that hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard, but what if you're talented and you work hard? That's what I'm saying. But That's what Amon Ra St. Brown is, man. Yeah, like he's a very he's, good point. He's uber talented and he works his tail off, which that's the part of this why when I bring up Amon Ra – I don't put a ceiling on the man because he really does have supreme work ethic. Like, one of the hardest working guys, I think, in the NFL, like, point blank. Not receivers. Hardest working guys, period. What does he catch? Uh, 200 in, like, one balls. Every day. Yeah. Every day. After yeah. practice because uh, he heard somebody else was catching 200, so he catches one more football than them. Yeah. Like, it's the mind games this man has. And <laughs> you talk about his development. He comes out, he ran like a 4-6 uh, at, the, at, the, at the combine. I think he ran like a 4-5 at his pro day. Not a blazer by any means. But then you see clips, you know, like against the Commanders last season where he had that end around. Uh, and by the way, guys, it, it, for people who forget, for that play, the end around uh, against the Commanders, you know how fast he ran? Mm -hmm. 21 miles per hour, almost 22. Ooh. You know where that ranks? Sixth fastest by any offensive NFL player last season at the time. 
So that's for a guy who's not a burner. That's why I hate fucking 40 times. And like just when you judge it, a player's athleticism off the combine because there's such thing as just raw speed, which is what you see at the combine, and then there's football speed where you know how to manipulate your leverage. Even when nobody's around you where you can create separation, which lets you build your speed, that's what why I think you hit it spot on, Jeff. Amon Ra has no ceiling in football because he's such a football head, and he knows how to develop his game even when it doesn't need to be developed. He doesn't mm -hmm. need to develop his route running much more. He really doesn't. He has already some of the best hands in the league. Does he need to develop them more? No, but he still does because he's consistent, and he's going to keep getting better. So right, right off the bat, they haven't been running them on deep routes like Flannel said, but now they're going to start opening it up. And what do you think Amon Ra is going to start doing every day now? Running deep yep. routes. Yes. Figure out how to bring that football speed and start running post routes and corner routes and 15-yard hitches instead of 10-yard hitches so we can get more yards after the catch and turn them into more big plays, especially when JMO's out. Yeah, and it's not all just getting open deep is speed, but also it's route running. Yeah, and he, just, has super, he has damn good route running. It's, just, it's all mental. Like if, you can, if you look at Devontae Adams, he's nothing close to a burner, but he makes every route off the line of scrimmage look the exact same yes. so you have no clue what he is doing. And the whole time he's doing that, he's manipulating your body which you don't even realize is happening and setting you up so he can go the other way and you're not even touching him. So now he's the fastest man on the field because he's not getting touched like he's supposed to be. Pause. And the other thing for, yeah, pause on that. But the other thing that uh, Amon Ra, St. Brown, I'm excited for his development is yards after catch because the guy, the guy already averages about 10 yards per catch. Like he's, he's reliant. You can depend on him. But the other part of that is Yak, mm -hmm. which he's getting better at as well. So if you're adding a, you know, his ability to run deep routes and, and kind of stretch the field, but also yards after catch improves, like we're talking again, like I predict he'll have, is about 1,400 yards this season. 1,400? Yeah, I do, Ooh. because he had a, almost 1,200, I think, yeah. last season. Give him 200 more without JMO, and he's getting better. And now it's it's pretty much known. Last season it was known, but now it's solidified. This is Amon Ra's the dude. And there's no TJ Hawkinson to take targets away. So I think he'll go for 1,400 this year. And I think that'll be good enough for an All-Pro. Yeah, 1,400 will definitely be good enough for an All-Pro, especially when it comes to Amon Ross St. Brown. I think it will accompany with like 115 to 120 catches. Oh, which, yeah. I mean, that will be an elite season. But he's one of the guys, and I hate to use this as a cliche, Amon Ross St. Brown is the type of guy that you do not bet against when it comes to hitting his ceiling because – and I know that this is, sounds a little bit premature, but this is the Detroit Lions in their history that we're talking about. I have never seen a player for the Detroit Lions get more out of their talent than Amon Ross St. Brown has so far. Mm -hmm. And Amon Ross St. Brown is talented. He's not some tryhard guy. He's very, very talented. I mean, we look at the 40 time, and when you look at what look at him on the field, it just doesn't compute because the man just has football speed. Exactly. I mean, you, you you see it. He's he's not some some slow footed guy. He no. is he is a, one of the more talented up and coming receivers but he gets every single ounce out of it jeff i see you making a face well i just i just read a comment i'm sorry sam i don't mean no, you're to good, interrupt bro. you but you're good. jeff olsen says hard to be an all-pro wide receiver with a game manager at quarterback you want me to name like multiple bro, wide receivers like one i mean obviously having a joe burrow is fine but when you're a game manager quarterback and you have a system around you usually that system is well like built around feeding your a your receiver your number one wide receiver which is amon ross st brown which the system is clearly dependent on or handing it to your number one running back that's what Jared Goff is going to be doing all year and he's a great quarterback but it's not like Jared Goff is throwing Amon Ross St. Brown open no Ben Johnson like... is scheming Amon Ross St. Brown open because Amon Ross St. Brown is a hell of a receiver and what he can do with it after the catch is amazing so no it has nothing to do with Jared Goff here and it's, it's not a... a diss to Jared Goff either no like get manager like Debo Samuel made it all bro <laughs> yes like Jimmy Garoppolo is his quarterback I mean, want me to keep going I mean we could keep bringing Justin this up. Jefferson this year was with, our, with Devontae Adams with Derek Derek Carr, like literally most of the outside of Stefan Diggs yeah. and Jamar Chases of the world, Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle down in Miami with Tua both had a thousand yards. Well, yeah, he'll, he'll me, be all right. Let me end this guy's argument in the easiest way possible because you guys just did a great job. Justin Jefferson has gotten off to the greatest start in the history of NFL wide receivers with over 4,800 receiving yards Ooh. in his first three seasons with Kirk Cousins as his quarterback. And I think we would all agree that at least right now, Jared Goff is better than Kirk Cousins. If Justin Jefferson can do it with Kirk Cousins, then a game managing quarterback is certainly not the problem and benji shout out to benji by the way my man uh joining the chat once again he says golf compliments st brown i think that's perfectly said uh he says blanket so it's not just can golf compliment st brown which he can the man again tied for the most receptions in nfl history through his first two seasons who was that quarterback jared Goff. like dude what are we doing here and he doesn't drop like he has some of no, the best he hands doesn't. in the league i mean that catch he had against green bay in the last week of the season where he caught it under his ass 
That I mean, I know you think that's fluky, but just the wherewithal to be like, okay, this ball has not hit my hand yet. I still need to find. Like most receivers can't do that and are not willing to do that, and that comes from catching 200 balls every day after practice. All that adds up, and that's what exactly what Amon Ross St. Brown is. He's one of the most fluid receivers in the game right now. Now, Public Enemy has something to say about your comments, Lucas. He says, so are you guys saying Andy Reid doesn't scheme players open, but only Ben Johnson does? No, that's not what, what Lucas I, is I, saying. No, but... I'm saying Ben Johnson schemes Amon Ross St. Brown open, just like he schemes Travis Kel Kelsey open. Every good offensive mind schemes yes. their best player open. Yes, Justin Jefferson is very good, but Kevin O'Connell schemes him open, so he's even better. Sean McVay, Cooper Cup is very good, but he schemes him open so Cooper Cup is even better that's what good coaches do you make your players better I no question and Ben can do that uh, certainly and Jared Goff's good enough to get him his production uh, I agree with that because again maybe with J-Mo you'd have concerns because J-Mo is a deep threat guy and, and you'd like a dude who can hit him and Jared at least the rapport with him and, and Jamison isn't there yet maybe it can get there but Amon Ra I mean he, he pretty much at all three levels I know deep, the deep threat he's working on but intermediate short routes like he's that's Goff's bread and butter. That's Amon Ra's bread and butter. It's a perfect match, in my opinion. Uh, Jeff Olson chiming in again. He says, receptions are fine, but part of that is the little dump-offs because Goff can't push the ball down the field very well. Kirk Cousins is mid, but he's a different type of mid than Goff. I don't is there like sections of mid? Like they're all. I mean, yeah, I mean, it, one just happened to play in a Super Bowl and doesn't really choke when he gets in the playoffs and can win on primetime games, unlike Kirk Cousins, who hasn't really won anything outside of in Washington in big games. So yeah. I'll take Jared Goff, who knows how to hold his nuts in big games. And I would love to see the yards per attempt for both Jared and Kirk Cousins. I think that would be an interesting statistic to look at. And um, like, let's also keep in mind he had Justin Jefferson, Adam Thielen, Delvin Cook, and now he has TJ Hawkinson. He has way more vertical threats, even in the running game or the running backs for the receivers. So it just the the style, the schemes and style are completely different. Yeah, I mean, even if you look at uh, yards gained per pass attempt, uh, Jared this season was 7.6, Kirk was 7.1. So it's not again. I'm not trying to make the, it. It is what it is. They're right around the same category. Whatever.